1538 AD, year 8 of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. Over two decades ago, before I was even born, an old village shaman came to our little mountain kingdom of Tungguo. He claimed to speak with the Nats, the ancestral spirits worshipped by our people before the coming of Buddhism. The Nats had told the shaman that an ancient warrior prince would be reincarnated in our kingdom. This prince would rule as the Chakravati, the universal ruler embodying Buddhist virtue. Soon after, a son named Tabin Shweti was reborn to one of the king's wives. At the same time, a servant girl had herself just birthed a son, and she was made the newborn prince's wet nurse. After all these years, I know the story of King Tabin Shweti's birth well. I am the son of his wet nurse. Though we came from very different origins, the Nats had joined the king and I. Though the Nats prophesied King Tabin Shweti's greatness, they blessed me as well. But not in the way my mother sees it. She does not believe that the king is the one the shaman spoke of. She says the nuts are not that simple. They are tricky spirits who mislead with their blessings. But I tell my mother that I am no warrior prince. The nuts have blessed me, though not as she believes. Because the king and I both suckled from my mother. He has treated me like kin and made me his loyal general. But with every blessing comes a curse. Our kingdom is under attack by the Shan, a warrior people of the far north. Our city's walls cannot stop them. So I have proposed to my king that we attack south, away from the northern threat. The kingdom of Hantawadi is a wealthy land and home of the Mon people. But it is ruled by a paranoid and cowardly king. As we march south... The Nats bring fear into the Mon King's heart. He flees his lands for the safety of his allies, just as a frightened water buffalo runs to his herd after smelling a tiger. The king and I are the Burmese tigers chasing after that buffalo. To reward my service in battle, my king bestowed a name of great honor upon me, Bayin Nang, which means king's elder brother. Though he is a king and I am but the son of a servant girl, he embraced me and declared a shared blood. I am no longer a simple servant. I am Bayin Nang. I am a prince. 1543 AD, year 13 of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. Our conquest of Lower Burma has brought fear to the Shan warlords. They call upon their allies, the Kingdom of Ava and the mighty Rakhin people, to raise armies against us. My king and I march north to Upper Burma, following the pilgrimage trail to Pagan city of 10,000 temples. From this city, the ancient kings of Pagan once ruled over a united Burmese people. If my king is to rule all of Burma, he must be crowned in Pagan. I will march ahead of my king to secure the city while he leads the army against our enemies. I will make all preparations for his coronation in that ancient capital. I will make sure that my brother fulfills his prophesied destiny. Our kingdom is mighty under King Tabin Shweti, the greatest monks, warriors and administrators in all of Burma come to our court. The king has made me his chief minister, but I worry for my brother. A man from Portugal has stumbled into the court and intrigued the king with his foreign ways and a bottle of strong wine. I fear that the blessed path that we have walked together has now come to a cursed end. 
1550 AD, year 20 of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. I am the chief minister of a kingdom without a king. The man from Portugal has corrupted King Tabin Shweti. My lord has taken to drinking and forgotten both the ways of Buddhism and the blessings of the Nats. He lives with the foreigner for weeks at a time on long, wine-filled hunting trips. Even when he is in court, the king orders executions in drunken fits. Many of the kingdom's officials have pleaded with me to depose the king and rule Burma justly. But though I love my country, I cannot betray my brother. I should have known rebellion would come. A monk named Thor, brother of the dead Hantawari king, incites a revolt in the south. The king is leaving on yet another hunting trip, but he has ordered me to take the army to defeat this rebel. I will follow my king's instructions, but I am concerned. A minister named Sautok is eager to see me leave. I do not know what trouble he has brewing. Sautok paid two swordsmen of the king's bodyguard to enter my brother's tent as he slept. Their pockets heavy with the traitor's gold, they drew their swords and beheaded my brother. His body was found by a monk and quietly cremated. I would throw away this crown if it brought my brother back. But he is among the nuts now. The nuts were tricky, just as my mother told me. They took my brother from me. I should not be king. I should not be the Chakavati. But the nuts made it so. I reject them. 1563 AD, year 13 of the reign of Bayinnaung, king of all Burma. The tiger rules the forest, but he is always hungry. It is the same with me as I look to the Thai kingdoms of the east. I have ruled for 13 years. But how am I the Chakavati if I am only king of Burma? Ayuntaya is the strongest of the Thai kingdoms. Her king, Chakrapath, has defied me for too long. He encourages the rebellion of one of my vassals, the king of Lanna. Even now, he sends his daughter to marry the ruler of the kingdom of Lanxiang in exchange for an alliance against me. But these schemes alone do not drive me to war. I know that Chakrapat has seven white elephants, a symbol of luck and divine favor. Already I hear the murmurs in the court. People with more spirit than sense whisper that if I truly am the Chakravati, why would the nuts have blessed Chakrapat with the elephants? I cannot allow this Thai king nor the nuts themselves to defy me. I will send my armies east, but they will not just bring war. I will send Buddhist monks with them to carry the word of my blessed Buddhist rule. I have conquered many enemies and made them bow before me. I have perched the land of the nuts, building stupas and monasteries where once the spirits ruled. I am the conqueror of the ten directions. I am master of all between the foothills of Tibet and the waters of Malacca, between the plains of India and the mountain jungle of Vietnam. The kings of Sri Lanka and Portugal send me gifts from across the ocean. The emperors of India and China call me their equal. My life will be written in the legends of three nations for centuries. I am Bayunnaung. I am the Chakavati. 1580 AD, year 30 of the reign of the Chakavati. Though the tiger grows old, his hunger does not leave him. It grows with age driving him to fresh hunting grounds and giving him a taste for more dangerous prey. For 30 years, I have ruled Burma 
and made a dozen kings bow before me. But what will they say of my life, that I rule by the sword and kill many men, that I, a king, was a slave to my desire? The old tiger is stubborn, but he knows when his hunger has gotten the best of him. My sons lead the army to conquer the Rakhine coast, the gateway to India. They are like their father once, chasing in vain across the earth for their greatest victory. My father did not live to see the conquest of the Rakhine. The doctor claimed the lung sickness took his life. But I know my father. No man who rode a charging elephant into throngs of Shan archers, who stormed the cities of the Thai, or who ruled an empire not seen since the ancient days, would die from a mere cough. No, my father left this world because he chose to. There was only one conquest left worthy of a man like Bai Yinaung. I know legends will be told of him. I know all shamans will tell prophecies, but no deed would match his final act. Greater in battle than the man who would conquer a thousand men is he who would conquer just one, himself. <laughs>